name is Bernie Clark. I'm the creator of yinyoga.com and I'd like to introduce you to probably my favorite of all yin yoga poses, the saddle pose. Now this can be a challenging pose but it has many benefits. One of the nice things about the saddle is it works so many different areas. When you're in the saddle we're working the ankles, the top of the ankles to open them up. You can also get a lovely stress to the kneecaps. As you come back, you get a lovely stretch to the quadriceps, the hip flexors, and then we start to compress the lower back as we arch here. So you get a lovely compression to the lumbar and the sacrum. And if you come all the way back, you can intensify the stretch to the hip flexors. And if you can bring your arms over your head, you also get a nice stretch and opening for the upper chest. Another nice thing about the saddle, for those that can sit between the feet, it becomes a lovely internal rotation for the hips. And often in yoga, we're very good at externally rotating the hips, but we don't have too many poses where we get to internally rotate the hips. So this one, if your knees can handle it, is a nice way to get into this, this area that we don't often get to touch too much. For the versions where the head is hanging back, we can actually get a compression now to the cervical spine and a nice stimulation to the front of the throat, massaging the thyroid gland, the parathyroids, and all the salivary glands that are located in front of the throat. As lovely as the saddle is, it's not for everybody. And there's a simple way to see if this pose is going to be available to you or not. And that's by starting by sitting on your heels. And then check how your ankles feel. As I mentioned, this is a lovely opening for the ankles. We're actually forcing the ankles to be 180 degrees. But for some people, their ankles can't handle this yet. So if you have ankle issues here, an option is to use a blanket or a towel or something and just put it underneath the ankles so you create a bit of a bridge here. By doing this, you might take the sensitivity out of the ankles. This may make the pose accessible for you. The next place to look for discomfort is in the knees. This is actually very therapeutic for the kneecaps because we are deliberately stressing the kneecaps, which will stimulate the chondrocytes and the fibroblast, and they help to build new ligaments and new cartilage. But if you have damage here, if this is painful in any way, again, you're either going to have to modify the pose or not do this pose. A simple modification for those who have too much stress in the knees is to sit up on something. You might want to use one, two, or three blocks. You put the blocks between the feet, and thus by sitting up higher, you should feel less stress in the knees and less stress in the ankles. For people who have lower back issues, coming into extension of the spine may also not be a good idea. But the gentle saddle actually is not that much of an extension. So for many people, just hanging out here could be the pose. They're getting some stimulation to the ankles, the knees, and a bit of an extension to the lower back. So as always, listen to your body. If this doesn't feel right to you, don't do it. There are other ways we can get into the areas of the body that you wish to target. For example, if your intention is to get into extension of the spine, perhaps a sphinx pose is a better choice for you. If your intention is to work the quadriceps, the hip flexors, perhaps a swan or the dragon, maybe more the pose that will work for you. There are many options and ways for getting into this pose. Again, start simply by sitting on your heels, checking how that feels. Once you're on your heels, the next stage is to simply walk the hands backwards, lean onto the hands, and now you're starting to get a bit more of a stretch through the quadriceps, and you can hang out here for a little bit, or if you're more flexible, you can come onto the elbows. At this stage, there's a choice to be made about the head. If you have neck issues, you probably want to keep the head up. But if the neck is fine, you can begin to let the head hang down, resting your head onto a bolster, if that's appropriate. Or some people who really want to get a nice stress for the neck, is to let the head rest on the floor. Now that's a pretty deep option, and it's not for everyone. The students who are very flexible, you can go a bit lower and perhaps rest on the bolster or come all the way down to the floor. Now sometimes it's just one knee that may be a bit of a problem. So in this case, you can do something called the half saddle. For the half saddle, I would suggest you do sit up on something. So let's suppose it's the right knee that's a problem. Sit up on a cushion, 
have the right leg straight. The left foot is just a bit to the outside of the left hip. And now you can start to come back. Again, all the option with the arms and the neck position apply here. You can just lean heavy into the hands, or if you're a bit more flexible, come onto the elbows. An easier version of the half saddle is to have the right leg bent. And again, if you're more flexible, you can come all the way down. The more flexible students may not need a bolster. And if this hurts the top of the foot, you can put some padding underneath it. A little bit more challenging here is to straighten the right leg. And as always, you can always add the arm positions, bringing the arms over your head. Either arms straight, pulling the arms away, or clasping the elbows and pulling the elbows away. An even juicier position, for those that can do it, is to bend the right knee and hug the knee in. As you pull the knee in, try to push the, the left knee down. So you start to intensify the stretch here. Now the half saddle is not just for people who have knee issues. You may wish to do a half saddle on one side for two or three minutes, then the half saddle on the other side for two or three minutes. This may make it more accessible to you rather than doing the full saddle for two or three minutes. Now there are some variations that may work some areas of the body more deeply than others. If your intention is to really work the curve in the lower back. An option that can be fairly deep for some is to sit on a cushion or a couple of cushions, in this case say three of the green foam blocks, place them between your feet and then start to come all the way down. Now this is the easy option for those that have knee issues, but if you come all the way down it becomes a very advanced option where you start to create more of a curve to the lower back. Hanging out here for five minutes, believe me, is very juicy. And again, you can always intensify it or bring the arms over your head. Now, people tend to do what they like, not necessarily what they need. So some people always default to sitting on the heels. Some people always default to sitting between the heels. And one's not right, one's not wrong. These are just different positions with different intentions. If your intention is to work into the hips and you want to more internally rotate your hips, sit between the heels if that's accessible to you. Just know for some people, as you come down, this gets a bit too much. So again, don't be worried it's too much. However, if you're sitting between the feet, you might find as you come back, this is a deeper challenge to the hip flexors. It's less of an arc to the lower back, so you might not find it so much there. Ultimately, sitting on the feet as you come back creates more of a lower back arch. So you can experiment these, find out what is a bit juicier for you. Now coming out of the pose can be a bit of a challenge. So we have a number of options. The first option is to call 911 or rent a forklift or a crane. But the easiest option, probably for some people, is to simply roll to one side. So you've been hanging out here for five, 10, 20 minutes. It's time to move and you can't move. So again, just start to tilt, roll over to one side. And you'll want to do this very slowly, like you're an old person. In fact, you won't have a choice. Just roll here, pause for a few moments. You've asked a lot of your lower back now. So don't be in a hurry to move. When it's time, you can straighten the top leg, and then straighten the bottom leg. Maybe even just supporting your hips, slowly roll onto your back. Probably the most common way to come up is to come up the way you went down by first propping yourself onto your elbows and then slowly work your way onto your hands. And from here, you just do a gentle face plant into child's pose. A third way to come out, which is more for the advanced students, is to simply lift the knees up, slide the feet out, and rest here with the legs straight for a few moments. For the counter pose. We've been moving the spine in an extension, so we'll want to move it into flexion, but we've also been flexing the knees quite a bit. So we want to do a counter pose for both these areas. We can do a flexion for the spine and also an extension for the legs. Depending on how you came out, you might choose to do one or the other. So if you came out first into child's pose, just hang out there, allowing the spine to be in flexion for a little bit. 
And when you're ready to extend the legs, simply come into a push-up or a crocodile pose and just contract the kneecaps, pull back here, feeling yourself lengthening. After a few moments here, you can lower down. A crocodile is a lovely yawn counter pose for the knees. Another option is if you've come out by rolling to the side or you just pop your knees up and you're on your back, you're already in an extension of the legs. So you can just stay here for a few moments. Again, just tighten the kneecaps, let them release. And then we'll have to do a counter pose for the spine. So simply hugging the knees in will put the spine into flexion. I would advise here holding the back of the legs because you've already been flexing the knees quite a bit here. So you don't want to hold the top of the shins. Hold the back of the knees so the feet can relax here. There's not so much stress into the knees. And then you can just circle the knees a bit. In this version, it's not easy to come to the crocodile, although you could just roll over onto your stomach to work the core of your body. Here you may choose to do the hinge. Bring your hands underneath your hips and just gently lower the feet, bring them up again. Again, a little bit of yang movement between the poses just to help get the blood flowing. More advanced students will do this with the legs straight. With the hinge here, you want to make sure the spine is not moving. So try to keep the lower back flat on your arms. That's why we have the hands underneath the hips so we can feel the spine as we come into it. As I mentioned, we're working the ankle joints, the knee joints, the lumbar, the sacroiliac joint, and if you bring your arms over your shoulder, you're working the shoulder joints. So we're working a lot of different areas here. From the meridian perspective, you're also working the tops of the thighs. So this is working the stomach and the spleen meridian. As you come back, you might feel that continuing through the upper body. As you start to compress the lower back, you're working the urinary bladder and the kidney meridian. If you bring the arms over your head, you may also be stimulating the heart and the lung meridians. So again, a very useful pose for stimulating and working many areas of the body at once. Because this pose is a bit challenging, you may only stay here for a minute, two minutes, or three minutes. Remember, there is the option to do the half saddle, perhaps staying two or three minutes on one side, two or three minutes on the other side. But for some people, they can stay in this for quite a long time. As I mentioned at the start, this is probably my favorite pose. I'd love to just stay here for six or eight or ten minutes. Mr. Iyengar, in his book, Light of Yoga, says that you should stay in this pose for 15 minutes if you work on your feet all the time. If you're a teller or a waitress or a cashier or an athlete that's always working with the legs, this could be a lovely way to rejuvenate the legs. Now, Mr. Iyengar doesn't use the term yin yoga, but that's a yin posture. 15 minutes in the saddle. It's quite juicy. In the yang world, this is known as supta vajrasana. If you're sitting on the heels and you start to come back. Or it's known as supta virasana if you're sitting between the feet and you start to recline. The intentions are fairly similar in the yang world and in the yin world. As I mentioned, Mr. Younger says, hold this pose for 15 minutes. It's a passive pose. It's a very yin-like pose. So we just hang out here and wait. And wait. And wait until help arrives. It's a good idea to do this pose with your cell phone beside you just in case.